Good morning everyone and welcome to Church Without Walls. Once again, Church Online, here we are at the end of March and I hope you remember to change your clocks and spring forward another hour. If not, then we'll see you in an hour's time perhaps. We're here on Palm Sunday, the beginning of Easter, where we join with the crowds at that first Easter time, shouting Hosanna, loud Hosanna. So let's come and begin our worship time together with these words and join with me if you want to do so. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let palms wave in high hosannas. Let coats and cloaks create a path. The unloosed colt and untamed rabbi ride to usher in the king coming kingdom. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us worship God. Hosanna, thou Hosanna, the little children sang through city, street, and temple. Their joyful welcome rang. They shouted out their praises to Christ, the children's friend. And chanting clear and loud Bright angels joined their chorus Beyond the cloudless sky Hosanna in the highest Glory to God on high Hosanna in the highest That Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of our Lord. Let us pray. Jesus, Son of Mary, save us. Help us to see you in our world today. Help us to meet you in everyone we see. Jesus, Son of Joseph, save us. Teach us how to live. Guide our footsteps in your way. Jesus, Son of David, save us. Show us how to live. Watch over us and keep us safe. Blessed are you, Lord Jesus. Hear us as we pray. Hosanna, save us now. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our Lord. Amen.
The first reading this morning is taken from Psalm 118, reading from verse 1, and it's in two parts. Hear the word of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, his love endures forever. And now turning to verse 19. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvellous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O Lord, save us. O Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine upon us. With bows in hand, join in the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Here ends the first reading. O glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children may sweet Hosanna sing. King of Israel, great David, royal son, now in the Lord's name coming, the King and Blessed One. O glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of Together make reply. O holy Lord and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children their sweet hosannas ring. Before you went, our praise and prayer and anthems before you we present. All glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children. Sweet Hosanna's ring to you before your passion. They sang their hymns of praise to you now, high exalted. Our melody we raise. All glory, Lord, and honor to you. Accept, accept the prayers we bring in every good delighting our great and gracious King. O glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the of children made sweet Hosanna's ring. The 
second reading today is taken from John, and it's John chapter 12, reading from verse 12. The next day the great crowd that had come for the feast heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat upon it, as it is written. Do not be afraid, O daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realise that these things had been written about him and that they had done these things to him. Amen, and thanks be to God for these readings from his holy word. Let us pray together. Thank you, God, for your word. May the Spirit breathe your wisdom into our minds and our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. It's not about us, it's all about him. It's not about our voices or our excitement or our fickle nature that turns from Hosanna to crucify It's about his willingness to take the road anyway, wherever it leads, and to keep on going, even when the noise of the crowds died away, and when friends abandoned him. To keep on going when the silence became eerie, and when the end was in sight, he kept on going. It's not about us, it's all about him. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Those ancient words from the Psalms that the crowd shouted and sang at the start of the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread were designed to herald in the coming King, the Saviour, none other than God himself. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are my God and I will praise you. These words are kept for God alone. It's not about us. It's all about him. The God who is willing to keep going when the rest of us would fall. The God who is willing to die in order to bring life. The God who is humble and non-violent and full of peace and grace and truth. Don't be afraid, daughter Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. This was so 
counter-cultural even then. The, the disciples didn't understand what this sign meant. They were used to seeing kings parading with pomp and ceremony, sending military attaches ahead to ensure the security of the place they were going to, surrounded by bodyguards and demanding everyone's attention. Whilst the Roman governor was making his way from the west of the country and from his stately home by the sea at Tiberias, in great pomp and ceremony, Jesus entered Jerusalem from the east, trusting in God to provide an appropriate means of transport and a place to celebrate the Passover with his friends, despite the plans to have him arrested and killed. Willie Barclay reminds us in his commentary that in first century Palestine, the horse was the mount of war, whereas the donkey was the mount of peace. Jesus was making it clear that he rode in as Messiah, but also as the king of peace, the fulfiller of prophecy. As Barclay puts it, he showed that he came not to destroy, but to love, not to condemn, but to help, not in the might of arms, but in the strength of love. Whilst the Passover crowd welcomed Jesus with palm branches and cloaks on the ground, we can see that their shouts of Hosanna had become shouts of crucify him within the space of a few days. Clearly, this Jesus was not what most of them expected the Messiah to be, he wasn't like the great warrior like the great warrior like Maccabean Jews whom they'd welcomed into Jerusalem in a similar way with palm branches and psalms nearly 200 years before following a great military victory over the Syrian Greeks. If Jesus knew this then he was telling a very different story of a very different kingdom. By now he knew he was going to die and he knew his death would somehow draw all people to himself. His message before going was believe in the light while there still is time. Then you will become children of the light. Jesus wasn't thinking of self-preservation in the way that most of us naturally would when faced with such a situation. He didn't run and hide. He walked in obedience to God all the way to a premature death on a cross. He wanted to show us that God could be trusted, that God's light would shine in the darkness and the darkness would never overcome it. There's been a lot of darkness during this global pandemic as well as a lot of light. Many people have died and many have lost loved ones or suffered poor health. But even for those of us who have not suffered that sense of loss, we've all lost something, whether it's been loss of freedom or movement or loss of contact with friends and loved ones. It can be so easy to despair and lose hope. Our moods can fluctuate from moment to moment. But the gospel message of Jesus is trust God because God in Christ has come to save us from our despair and darkness, from our sin. He's made a way to carry the weight of all the heaviness and lead us from that heavy space, that heavy sense of cap captivity and imprisonment, into a new exodus of freedom and hope, one that would last forever. Because he loves us, and wants to gently and humbly enter our lives and establish his kingdom there, assuring us that everything will be all right in the making of all things new. It's not about us. It's all about him and about what his spirit can do in us and through us. As we begin to celebrate this most holy week of Easter, why not join us each evening this week to reflect on a different aspect of what Easter means for us all? I look forward to us being together again. In the meantime, let us pray. 
O great God and Heavenly Father, thank you that in Jesus your love was made complete. Thank you for his selfless obedience to truth and justice. Facing up to death, Christ has become our salvation and our hosannas are satisfied for good. In the same spirit, may we walk our journey of faith as you make us one in Christ. Amen. together in prayer. Let's pray. Father, on this pan Sunday morning, hear us as we bow before you in prayer, united in our praise and worship. Be with us, Father, as we continue our journey through Lent, as we prepare to walk through Holy Week. This coming week, Father, as we remember the heartache and anguish that Jesus suffered on Good Friday, and as it was replaced by the joy of Easter Sunday, may we be ever so aware that your love endures forever. Father, we come with our prayers of intercession for others, for our church and for ourselves. May we pray for all who are sick, unwell and hospital at present time within our community. For folks who are alone, worried or troubled at the moment, for all affected and impacted by COVID. And we pray especially this morning for West Lothian, as reported figures continue to rise. Father, draw close. Please let them all be ever so aware of your presence, your love, your very care, all around them at this time. We all know many people in need of your love, Father, of your blessing at this time. And in the next few moments of silence, 
may we name them in our hearts. Lord, we lift these names up to you and ask that you hear each and every one of them. We lift our church up, Father, our fellowship to you as Easter approaches. We give thanks for the special time that Easter is in the Christian calendar, but mark with sorrow the anniversary of our building's closing because of the pandemic. With many of our fellowship groups on hold, and others making the most of technology. We give thanks for the numerous communications options we have available to us and how they have been embraced by many over the last 12 months. But by your grace and mercy, Father, may we be ever so aware and mindful of the importance of keeping in touch with others. When the time is right, we look forward to meet again, Father, face to face, unrestricted, in praise and worship of you, Father. We pray for our wider world where things of beauty of spring, as spring gathers apace, for the plenty we enjoy, for the freedom we have, albeit with several restrictions at present. But in this Palm Sunday morning, Father, we pray for many areas around the world where poverty, inequality, injustice are ever present, where these things result in hunger, vulnerability, disease and exploitations throughout many areas of our world. Father, we do pray for men and women of faith and conviction to be placed in positions of power and in places of authority, Lord. Father, on this Palm Sunday morning, by your grace, guide us in how we can serve you best. And may we ask a special blessing on the Wilson family this morning. Father, we bring the, you these our prayers, and we do so in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and our Saviour. Amen. Let us go and prepare for Easter and reflect on our Saviour's journey to us and for us and now with us. 
Grace and peace be with you. Amen.